welcome to The Bottom Line, where we examine trending and important news. Vice President Dr. Bar Jagdio has disagreed with naysayers that there is a feeling of doom and gloom across Guyana. The Vice President at the time was responding to questions related to misinformation being peddled by certain sections of society and by politicians and the seemingly negative effect this is having on Guyanese society. The VP added that Guyanese are smart enough to recognize the players in the game, noting that each player has a noticeable track record. People have an uncanny sense of what is fair, what is right, and they know the player as well. So in the mind of an ordinary person in this country, regardless of how you vote it, the APNO has demonstrated uh, incapacity to manage anything. They've had 28 years in government and we ended up at the end of the period poorer than when we started, one of the poorest countries in the world, and then they had five years again, and we started the decline again. So their capacity to manage the economy is recognized, or their incapacity to manage the economy is recognized. The VP also touched on promises made by the opposition leader, Aubrey Norton, if the coalition is voted into office come 2025. So do you think that anybody takes Norton seriously when he says, we're going to remove all these taxes if we get into government? We saw that promise in 2015. In a huge manifesto, people were paying too much taxes, but under the PPP, we'll change this. And then we had an increase in 200 taxes and fees. That's the track record. They believe people have forgotten this. Nobody has forgotten this. Then imagine a Norton. Norton has never really managed anything seriously. Or your chief economist, Eurita Fernand. Sometimes when she speaks, I, I wonder if the University of Ghana would consider taking back degrees that they confer on some people because of the nonsense that she says, that that's not, no economic sense. Looking at the current list of opposition members of parliament, the VP questioned how could Guyanese entrust them to manage the economy, more so the oil and gas economy in the future. The APN new AFC coalition spirit in government could best be described as a kleptocracy. The VP pointed out that the Integrity Commission Act makes provisions for securing the integrity of persons in public life. The commission was established to ensure that persons in public life maintain high standards of integrity in performance of their public functions. This assists in the improvement of the standards of good governance, transparency and accountability in government. For three years, the first three years in, since 2000 did not submit statements to the Integrity Commission. They took place on the Granger and the PNC government. From 2000 to 2015, every year, the statements to the Integrity Commission were submitted. Three years missing under the PNC. The VP also commented on the land grabbing that took place under the APNU plus AFC after the new confidence motion and during the five month working attempt. Jordan, after the elections, put out a gazette, signed an order to transfer to over 100 persons plots of land in Linden, but the cronies, not ordinary people who are struggling to get a piece of land. They now, those people are now going to get 1,000 houses being built because the president promised that in London and they just got another 400 lots at Amelia's Ward. But you check, in the five years, the 100 odd persons who got plots of land there were all politically connected. 
Several former APNU plus AFC ministers are currently facing charges related to corrupt acts and electoral fraud. Vice President Jagju revealed recently not only two financial statements for the International Decade for People of African Descent, Assembly Guyana, a private limited liability company, were submitted up to 2020 and the directors are listed as beneficial owners of the company. The VP also pointed out that in the 2020 financial statement, out of the $100 million received, only $343,000 went as grants to ordinary people. Everything else went to salaries, rentals and a range of other things. Vincent Alexander, in his capacity as chairman of the International Decade for People of African Descent, Assembly Guyana, has issued threats of legal action against the vice president. My lawyers have responded to his lawyers to say he could proceed with the lawsuit because we intend to vigorously challenge this. But I think that lawsuit, or the, the threatened lawsuit, is to muzzle me. And if he knows anything, I would never allow Vincent Alexander or any person of his ilk to muzzle me. I have a fiduciary duty as General Secretary of one of the, the, the largest party in the country and as, as Vice President and a member of this cabinet to question the use of taxpayers' money. And they have had five, nearly $500 million of taxpayers' money and have not until now accounted for its use because financial statements are not presented as yet. Based on information received from other organizations, ordinary Guyanese have not benefited from this money. These government funds were not given to improve the lives of an elite group, but to improve the lives of ordinary Afro-Guyanese in the country, to which Ipadiji failed miserably. They have to tell their country and those organizations that they claim to represent how much money went in salaries and who received the salaries. Because imagine if you look at 40 something million dollars a year in one year for salaries and five years, that's over 200 million dollars in salaries. In the five years that we were in opposition, I had a constitutional office. I did not take this salary as leader of the opposition. I did not take this salary. So my only income was the presidential pension. But my office, the constitutional office, got about $200 million, totally, for the office of the leader of the opposition. $50 million a year? Right, just, just on about just on. 40, $50 million a year in five years. So they got 500 million and we had to account for it. They got 500 million dollars. So we would like to see how, what, how they chose the people that they rented the buildings from and who got the contract that, for the building that they rented. And you may be shocked to find out who the person is. So we want to find out all of that, about all these conferences and the activities that they arrange, like the market day and how much that costs. So they have to, they can't run away from this. They have to account for this. Alexander and another director of Epadigy were slated to speak at a conference theme an emerging apartheid state in Guyana. A lot of people, I've seen them go to Buxton and everywhere else and beat their chests about how they represent Afro-Guyanese and Afro-Guyanese interests. And I said that they're parasitic. They're using the cause to justify their own pecuniary interests. Many people, because there were any funds that will go to improvement of Afro-Guyanese, they corner those funds and utilize them 
for other purposes. The failed attempt to justify the use of hundreds of millions in government funds by the leaders of the International Decade for People of African Descent, Assembly Guyana, has made the Guyana Rastafari Council irate, causing the body to take a swipe on social media at the leaders of Apadaji. The council openly questioned the methodology used by Apadaji to select groups to benefit from funding they had previously received from the government of Guyana since 2018. In a statement, the Rastafari Council added that there are four to black groups in the assembly, but alleged that the only three signatories to the organization's bank account are from one organization, the Coffee 250 Committee. The group further claimed that it refused to join the political bandwagon of Ipadiji leading up to the 2020 general and regional elections, which the council said caused them to be sidelined by Ipadiji. I quote, Ipadiji was basically hijacked by the Coffee 250 and funded by the former government to campaign during the last election. Because we did not join the political bandwagon, we were sidelined and we had to leave. End quote, the Guyana Rastafari Council wrote on their Facebook page. Guyana's first people were given the assurance that they will not be left out of the country's development but rather play an integral role in taking the country forward. This assurance was given by President Dr. Muhammad Irfan Ali as he addressed hundreds who gathered at the Guyana National Stadium to witness the cultural extravaganza in celebration of Amerindian Heritage Month 2022. Regardless of how we look, regardless of where we are from, we are entitled to the same treatment, the same benefit, the same love, and the same opportunity as one family, the family of humanity. Tonight, I reassure every member of our indigenous community that we stand strongly with you in ensuring that our development path, in ensuring that creating the pathway to prosperity will include you, every one of you, every single family, every single region in our indigenous community, whether it's in the river and area, whether it's on the hill or in the valleys, we will find you, we'll work with you, and we will move you together as we build a country of prosperity for every single family. The government has been working assiduously and investing heavily to empower Amerindians across the country. The indigenous people were reassured by the president that they will enjoy the same benefits as persons living on the coast. When you look at the young faces, what do you see? You see a story of hope, one of aspiration, one that is looking to the future for the same opportunity any single other Guyanese must have. And that is the bridge, that is the gap that we must cover. And I assure all of you tonight that we are going to cover that gap and you are going to get equally every opportunity that is available here on the coast coming to your home. We will make the investment to give you the bandwidth to give you online education, and I'm saying this tonight, as I said in Region 9. Every single Amerindian with the qualification that want to be trained as a nurse, as a teacher, as a dental technician, as a medical worker, I'm saying to you now, we are committing that we as a government will train every single one of you come forward we will provide the opportunity we will provide the money we will provide the environment and we will give you that opportunity this year's heritage month celebrations which returns after a two-year hiatus due to the covid 19 pandemic is being held under the theme celebrating our traditional culture while promoting one guyana Person next to you, happy and brilliant heritage. Look for the person.
Free and fair elections has always been a topical issue. 70 years after independence, unfortunately, free and fair elections remains a matter that Guyanese have to struggle for because there are those among us who wish to pervert our electoral process, opting to steal elections instead of winning by the ballot. This view was shared by Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Senior Counsel Anil Nandalal, on his program issues in the news. They continue to peddle the discredited narrative that there were multiple voting at the last elections, that persons who were not in Guyana on elections day but were overseas on election day voted at the March 2nd elections, and also that deceased persons voted at the March 2nd elections. You will recall that when those allegations were made during the national recount at the Arthur Chung uh, Conference Center, they submitted a document to the then chairman of GCOM, they meaning the APNU as a political party, when they realized that they, were, they would have lost the elections, they, submit a, they submitted a document to the Chairman of the Elections Commission which they claim contain the names and relevant information of persons whom they claim voted at the elections but whom were dead, were overseas and on the day of voting and who voted multiple times. The CARICOM team was at the time deemed the most legitimate interlocutor to overlook the recount. The team rejected the coalition's allegations as completely unfound, without merit and wholly baseless. This was documented in a report by the CARICOM team. And the APNU AFC were told to file an elections petition. They filed the elections petition and they were so incompetent that the election petition was not heard because they did not serve it in accordance with the rules governing elections petition. Then notwithstanding all of those failed attempts, they continue to peddle this narrative about ghost voting at elections, multiple voting at elections, and fraudulent voting at elections by persons who were not in Guyana at the time of voting. As a result, on behalf of the government of Guyana, I wrote to the chairperson of GCOM requesting the documents that were supplied to her by the APNU AFC during the recount process. In the letter, I highlighted that they presented to GCOM what purported to be data, personal information of persons whom they said they gathered from the authorized state agencies, meaning the Immigration Department and possibly the, Gaia, the General Registrar's Office, and they claimed that those information were authentic and that is what they based their, their claims and allegations on. The information was discredited as many of the persons listed in the document as being overseas came forward to deny it. Several of them spoke to the media and denounced the contention that they were in the US asserting that they were in Guyana and that they voted lawfully. Some of them were even labelled as deceased. Nevertheless, the AG said these allegations need to be investigated. We wrote the chairman of GCOM requesting that document so that the relevant agencies that are implicated in these documents can conduct investigations or the relevant agencies charged with the responsibility to investigate such conduct can be afforded the opportunity to investigate 
these documents, their authenticity, their accuracy, the accuracy and veracity of the information they purport to furnish and to also determine if possible who instructed these documents to be prepared. At the end of this process, at the end of this inquiry and or investigation, whatever laws were violated, if any, will be enforced by the relevant enforcement, law enforcement agencies. And if there is evidence to yield criminal charges, then criminal charges shall be instituted and shall be prosecuted in accordance with law. The AG added that the PPVC government does not intend any longer to countenance the belief in any person that what occurred on March 2nd, 2020 and thereafter will ever occur again in Guyana. Law-abiding citizens and the government must join hands to ensure that attempts at electoral fraud never occur again in this country. And that's the bottom line.